Hey, what's up everyone? This is Aaron from Studio 3B. Today I'm just gonna show you how do you archive a CD and how do you organize your music. I'm gonna show you how I do this and I'm gonna do it on Mac OS. Stay tuned. First things first, you're gonna need a software program to rip the CD. So you wanna do this carefully because you wanna pick a software program that will be non-destructive to your audio. If you really care about your audio, you'll save it exactly the way it is on a CD and then you won't lose any information. Later on down the line, you could always take this file and compress it. However, for archive purposes, you never wanna store it, the compressed version. You wanna store the original version. So the software program that I recommend is called XLD. So just go to Google, Search on XLD, go to download, and download that bad boy. Open up XLD, you're gonna copy that file, and you're gonna open up your applications, and you're gonna paste it in there. Now you have XLD on your Mac, so now you're gonna run that program. It says XLD can't be opened because Apple cannot check it for malicious software, just click OK. Control right mouse click and click open. Then you can click open and it'll let you go. All right, now this is the interface you get. So what you're gonna do is choose your option, output format. So output format, you could choose any one of these. Some of them are better than others. Like I said, don't rip it to MP3. You're gonna lose information. It's gonna be detrimental to the file and you're gonna lose some of the original audio that was in the file, whether or not you think you could hear it or not. So what I would do is do the best of both worlds. See, WAVE and AIF are very similar file formats. They are exactly as they are on the CD. The thing is they're very large files. So what we recommend in the audio community is FLAC. FLAC stands for free lossless audio codec. FLAC is good because it does not lose any information whatsoever, but it does compress the file to a smaller file size, not quite like an MP3 does, but it compresses it much smaller than a wave or an eighth. There you go, let's go to options. So if time is no issue for you, what I would do is compress it to a, a higher level it takes a little more time, but it's a smaller file size. And I would leave all the other settings the same. Then output directory. So I would definitely set that and I would set it to a directory you know where it's gonna go. So I'm gonna set it right to my profile. I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call it rip. And you open that. So then everything else is pretty much good. Uh, let's go to file naming. Now file naming, you should be consistent, but this is not the end of our archiving solution. We're gonna go in and organize our files when we're done. That doesn't mean we shouldn't name the files consistently. That way they're easy to find. So let's see, format of the file name is default. It looks like it's gonna be track number. A is artist and then T is track name. So let's, let's stick with that for now. This is gonna dump everything into one directory. So we're gonna organize that later. Now CDDB is a database where you're allowed to uh, look up artist information and that's where it will take the CD and look up online. What is the artist uh, name? What is the track names and what is the album information? So let's just keep that set. Metadata, we're gonna add tagging, it's all default. So let's just go to CD rip. So this is where it comes down to the best solution. So burst, burst is what you're gonna do if you really don't care about any problems, you just wanna get it done. And Burst is also good if there's scratches on your CD and you just need to get the music off the CD. Uh, Burst will help you get through that, but it will introduce artifacts and clicking and popping if you have a scratched CD. If you have a fairly decent CD, I recommend XLD Secure Ripper. It is the more up-to-date solution for ripping. Okay, so CD Paranoia is a more outdated, older version. Uh, people used to choose that a long time ago. So let's just go with XLD Secure Ripper and I'm just gonna leave all the other settings the same as the default. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna insert the disc. You need to have a CD-ROM on your computer. So open up your CD-ROM, eject it, and then you press the uh, close button. Don't just push the, de the tray in there. Okay, now that the disc is in there, we're going to file open audio CD. And the funny thing about working on Macs is uh, it automatically opens in iTunes, which is a pain. Okay, so I found the settings that you should change if you don't want Apple Music to open when you insert a CD. So uh, when you insert a music CD, it's set to open music by default. You can just say ignore. So let's 
do that. So I'm gonna close Apple Music and I'm gonna try to insert the CD one more time and see what happens. Um, if you ever have a problem ejecting your CD, go to Finder and go to your CD and click eject there. Okay. So I got the CD ejected. Let's try to insert it again. I think Apple Music conflicts with XLD. So you don't want that opening up when you insert a CD. Let's open up XLD. Let's reconfigure our settings. So I had it on FLAC, options, high, and I'm gonna set the output to be uh, my RIP folder. Now all the other settings were the same. XLD Secure Ripper. Okay, let's try to open that CD one more time. If it's the first time you've done this, it's gonna prompt you to access your volumes. Then you should hear the drive spinning up. It's detecting the pre-gap, which is all the gaps between the songs. There you go. So now you have the CD loaded. Simply click Extract and it will go to the folder that you designated, RIP. Technically speaking, you can create a new folder for each CD. If you don't do that, it'll dump it all to one directory. So let's just do that anyway. And then open that. And then you get a progress. So you see how fast it's going. If there's no scratches on the song, you're gonna get a nice speedy extraction like this one is going. This is a fairly decently maintained CD. If you get the older, more scratched up CDs, you're gonna get error correction going on. So the CD will go a lot slower during the rip, but it'll correct the little errors as it can. If it really gets stuck and you just can't get the song off, either scrap the whole CD altogether if you don't want clicking and popping, or you, like I said, you can go to the burst mode and that's generally gonna get through a lot of that. Okay, when it's done ripping, you're gonna get a uh, log file here and it tells you basically if there's any errors or anything like that. So, um, you know, keep that if you're scrupulous and you can close that out. Um, I'm only doing one CD for this demo, so I'm gonna close out XLD and let's just go and check out our files. So you got Masters of Reality in there and you can play it a little sample to make sure it sounds good. <laughs> So that's that. Now what we could do is go through all your CDs, rip them uh, maybe in batches, maybe, you know, however many you could fit on your hard drive comfortably. So once you go through a bunch of CDs, maybe 10, I don't know how many you want to rip at a time. Um, what I recommend doing is figuring out where you're going to store these. So, you know, you need a NAS, you need a server, you need a big hard drive something like that that's going to store all your flag files once you identify where the files are going now it's time to organize them so for that i recommend a program called music brains picard go ahead and download that and this is available on windows too i believe go ahead and copy that to your applications load up picard and give it permission all right, so now how this works is it's gonna look up on a server uh, all the information about your particular CD. So what you're gonna do is go add folder. Yeah. And then you can choose the root folder of all your CDs, click open. And then what it does is it finds your songs. So this is unclustered files. This is files that have not been organized yet. So what we're gonna do is, uh, let's go to preferences and go to file naming. Um, what I'm gonna recommend doing is, just so you know that files have been archived properly, I would uh, click move files when saving, and I'm gonna browse to a different directory than the music directory. I'm gonna create a new folder, and I'm gonna call it music library. And I'm gonna drag that to my home folder. So this music library or whatever folder you want to call it will be the organized final folder that you can store your music in. So click open. Then I think you're pretty much good with that. So let's just say make it so. So now what you do is select all the files in the unclustered files. I only have a handful from one CD here. But what I do is if it's a CD, you can click scan and it'll look at the signature of the audio file and they should be able to find your file. So let's click that. All right, so now what this did was match it with two separate CDs. So Music Brains is a little funky. Sometimes it mismatches CDs. 
So I've got one down here and I've got one up here. So this one down here, if you look at the metadata, this says it's 12 inch vinyl. So this is not a 12 inch vinyl, this, this is a uh, CD. So the one up here is, I would just go with this. It says total discs is one, total tracks is eight. That looks like the right one. What you could do is click on the one that's misidentified and literally drag it up to the one where it's supposed to be. So children of the grave and put it up there. There we go. So now you'll see that this CD turned gold. That means that it has all the songs found on it. Sometimes if you have trouble ripping, you won't have all the songs on the CD. So the star on it means it needs to be saved. So let's go ahead and save this. What that just did is save all these FLAC files with all this metadata and the images are loaded into it and it moved it to the folder where I told it to go. So if you go to your home folder, you'll see you have a Black Sabbath directory, then a Master of Reality directory, and then the FLAC file. There, that's just a brief overview of how you organize your files. Now, from there, it's up to you. What do you want to do? How do you want to play your music? Uh, there's all different audio solutions for that. You could use Audervana, you could use Rune, you could use Plex, and you could use Clementine. You could use all kinds of different media players to play this music, but the nice thing is they're tagged, they're organized, and they have images associated with them. So until next time, thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing. Click the notification bell for updated content on audio and technology. Stay tuned for the next video coming up soon. Thank you.